I want to call the July 7, 2016 Davis County Fiscal Court meeting to order. Commissioner Caslin, would you lead us in a prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance? I will. Dear Heavenly Father, we pause for a moment to thank you for the blessings you bestowed upon us as a nation, as a community, and as individuals. We ask, dear Lord, that you send your holy angels to be with us and guide us this evening. And dear Lord, we have in our presence this evening several new members of the Sheriff's Office, and we ask you to bless them not only this evening, but, but throughout their careers, Lord, and send your angels to be with them each evening, each day as they go out to patrol and, and to serve the citizens of this community. And we pray not only for them, Lord, but also the, those that they serve. And Lord, we just we praise your name and we ask all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. And once again, I want to welcome everyone to our July 7th, 2016 Davis County Fiscal Court meeting. The uh, Jenny, do you want to start us on our public hearing? Yes, sir. Item one, dis discontinuing a section of Ratcliffe Road beginning at the end of the county maintained section of Ratcliffe Road to Highway 1207 for an approximate distance of 0 0.798 miles. Application filed by Herbert S. Miller. Claude, do you want to tell us why we're going through this before I ask for any comment? Judge, we're doing this because there was a petition requesting us to do this. This portion of the road um, has never been maintained by the county. Uh, the people who uh, own this uh, property now own all of the property, and they've asked that that portion of the road be discontinued uh, so that they can use it for their own use. Uh, or statute requires that a petition right. be done by the... Ratliff Road runs off of 140 just past Utica. Yes. And uh, it actually winds around and comes back out all the way on 1207, I think, Mark. I think most of the commissioners have been out there and, and looked at it. What what they're wanting us to discontinue, in effect, is an old wagon road. And it's hard to even determine yeah. that there is a road there. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone in the public who would like to come forward and comment on the discontinuance of a section of Ratliff, Ratcliffe Road? Looks like we have no takers, so I'm going to declare the public hearing closed. Regular meeting agenda, item one, consideration for presentation, A, introductions of newly hired Davis County Deputy Sheriffs Alex Coom, Coombs, Matt Fitzgerald, Lacey Johnson, and Errol Aaron Stevens. Okay, commissioners, we have uh, uh, the sheriff out here, Keith Kane, and I'm going to turn it over to you, sheriff, so that you can introduce those deputies and embarrass them in any way possible. I mean, introduce them in the best way possible. Thank you, Judge. It's uh, my honor and my privilege to be able to introduce to the physical court and to the community at large uh, the four newest members of what I like to refer to as the Sheriff's Office family because we are indeed uh, a family. Uh, I think it's particularly important to note that three of these individuals were born and raised in Davis County. There's a lot said about people growing up and moving on somewhere else to pursue their dream and their career. Uh, these individuals uh, wanted to do it in their hometown and we're a privilege to be able to give them an opportunity to do that. Uh, perhaps even uh, uh, just as important as one of them uh, we have brought over all the way from Harlan, Kentucky. Uh, now, I will tell you that uh, a young lady from Davis County probably had as much to do with that as him coming to work for us, uh, but be that as it may, uh, he is here in Davis County and we're very proud to have him. Let me introduce these individuals to you just uh, very briefly, if you can believe that judge. Uh, first, I have uh, Matt Fitzgerald. Matt, if you'd stand up, please. Matt is from uh, Knottsville community. He graduated from Davis County High School in 2003. He was uh, in the United States Marine Corps from 2005 to 2009, uh, which included a combat deployment to Iraq. He graduated from Western Kentucky University, Owensboro in 2014 with a BA in psychology and nonprofit leadership. He spent 22 weeks at the Department of Criminal Justice uh, at the Department of Criminal Justice Training Academy in Richmond, and he graduated as the honor graduate, number one in his class. He is married to the former Miss. There you go. He is the uh, 
He is married to the former Miss Haley Riney. Uh, they, he and his wife currently attend St. Stephen's Catholic Church. He's been with us since uh, August of last year, uh, August the 20th, 2015. So, Matt, welcome to our office. Matt, welcome, and uh, the fact that you married that Riney girl tells me that you have good judgment. Okay, next we have uh, Lacey Johnson. Lacey, if you'd stand up, please. Deputy Lacey Johnson is 26 years old. They filled, they filled these out themselves, and uh, what, it's particularly important to note that Lacey is still young enough that she will tell us her age. <laughs> uh, she's 26 years old, was born and raised in Knottsville also. Uh, she is engaged to be married in April of 2017. She attended Davis County High School and followed up with college at Kentucky Westland, where she was on a scholar, uh, soccer scholarship her freshman year. Deputy Johnson then went on to join the United States Army in which she is still currently serving as a sergeant at Fort Knox with the 4399th ROCT Training Battalion. She began her law enforcement career at the Davis County Detention Center in 2011 before being hired with our, officer, our office in September of 2015. Deputy Johnson has been serving the community as a patrol officer since May the 14th of this year, two months, when she finished her PTO program. She has a beautiful daughter, Braylynn, who is eight years old. Braylynn, you stand up for us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're proud to have both of them uh, with the Sheriff's Office family. Okay, Lacey, welcome. Alex, if you'll stand up, please. <clears throat> Alex Coons was born and raised in Davis County. He is 25 years old. His parents are Steve and Diane Coons. He attended Orangeboro Catholic Schools and graduated from Catholic High in 2010. He graduated from the University of Kentucky in 2014 with a Bachelor of Science uh, in Kinesiology. Am I saying that right? Kinesiology. Yeah, well, that's close enough, in exercise science. Uh, he's a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a certified personal trainer through the National Strength and Conditioning Association. My secretary, who is a tremendous UK fan, said, be sure and tell him this. He was a strength and conditioning assistant for the University of Kentucky football team from 2013 to 2014. You don't want to arm wrestle this guy. Be more impressive if you'd been with the basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's don't Graduated from me, the Jenny. Department of Criminal Justice Training Academy on April of this year. He finished his PTO training and his first shift solo was <clears throat> just a few days ago on June the 27th, 2016. Alex, Alex welcome. welcome. And last but certainly not least, we have Aaron Stevens. Aaron, if you'll stand up for us, please. Aaron's the gentleman I told you we brought over from Eastern Kentucky. He's having some uh, difficult time adjusting to uh, the different culture here in Western Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> he graduated from the James A. K. Wood High School in 2005. He graduated from Eastern Kentucky University in 2011 with a bachelor's in special education for the deaf and hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. Prior to working for the Davis County Sheriff's Office, he worked uh, for the Kentucky Department of Corrections at the Kentucky State Reformatory and also three years with probation parole. He graduated from the Department of Criminal Justice Training Academy. He is married to Heather Stevens, the young lady I told you earlier about, formerly Nash, of Whitesville. They have one child, Braxton Michael Stevens, who is four months old. His hobbies include family, hunting, fishing, and sports. So Aaron, we're really proud to have you also. Aaron has not yet been released from the PTO program, which means he's still riding with an officer. Uh, but uh, we're extremely proud of, of uh, these men and, and, uh, and Lacey. Uh, I will tell you that uh, uh, we interviewed uh, over 20 people for the positions that uh, became available. Uh, this all resulted, of course, as you may recall, when we lost uh, four officers to retirement last year. Um, out of the 20-plus uh, people we interviewed, these are the four selected, and we are convinced uh, that we made a good selection in, in doing so. Well, Aaron, welcome to the Sheriff's Department. Welcome to Davis County. All four of you again, welcome, and uh, we look for good things out of you. Now, before, before you leave, I want to tell you I drive a big red truck. <laughs> Just remember that. Commissioner Wathen drives a big red truck. <laughs> Uh, uh, Commissioner That's Culver right. drives a big white truck, and Commissioner Castle drives a little bitty old pint-sized car. <laughs> so if you see a big red truck, a big red truck, or a big white truck with that little bitty car in the bed of it, 
<laughs> Let it just leave us go on. <laughs> We've got a saying in our profession, Judge, we'll catch you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all well, want to sit down and indulge the sheriff for just a few more minutes? Now, Sheriff, you're here also to talk to us about the STOPS program. I am, uh, uh, Judge. We wanted to just take a couple of minutes to uh, let the fiscal court know what's going on in terms of uh, a, a new procedure that you'll probably see in uh, our, our officers undertaking when they encounter a, uh, uh, a traffic violation. We want to bring you up to date on some changes in how our officers will be conducting those traffic stops. These changes could result in some calls from uh, some of your constituents wanting to know what's going on, and we want to enable you to answer those, those questions. Push the button, Larry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only activates when Keith's talking. Most of us are familiar with the way a traffic stop goes down. You see the blue lights behind you. You realize that, yep, he probably means you. you pull to the curb and you wait for the inevitable. The officer then approaches your door. Good evening, sir or ma'am. Do you know why I stopped you, etc. You give them your license, your registration, your proof of insurance, and then you wait while the officer returns to his cruiser to determine your fate. We've been doing it that way for a long time. In fact, a little bit of trivia, the first recorded speeding ticket was in New York City in May of 1899. The driver of an electric car on Lexington Avenue was going 12 miles per hour in an eight miles per hour zone. <laughs> The officer was on a bicycle. New traditions were born that day. I wasn't speeding. The mayor is a personal friend of mine, et cetera, and so forth. Not much has changed in more than 100 years, except current studies indicate that always following that procedure was getting law enforcement officers killed in two different ways. By other vehicles, because we're normally standing right on the edge of the traffic lane and the motorists don't always see us. And two, Sometimes bad guys who don't want us to take their driver's license back to cruisers and run them for warrants or who may have something in their car that could cause them to be arrested, so they ambush the officer as he or she is walking up to the vehicle. A routine traffic stop is one of the most dangerous th things an officer can do. It is anything but routine, and our deputies do them multiple times on every shift every day. So over the past few years, those who study these things have come up with a program that gives the officers some additional options. The program is called STOPS, and it's all about training officers to look at different ways to position themselves while performing a traffic stop. Their research has shown that something as simple as walking up on the passenger side and having a conversation from there can make an enormous difference in an officer's safety or sometimes asking the driver to get out of the car and walk back to the cruiser instead of the officer always walking there can reduce a risk. A lot of departments across the country have adopted this program and it has saved a lot of lives already. The Kentucky State Police has gone to it and it's been introduced into our basic police academy that all our new officers will attend. So over the coming weeks, we'll be introducing our current officers to this program and drivers who get stopped may notice a difference. We'll continue to use the standard driver's side approach probably the majority of the time, particularly during the daytime on roads that don't have a lot of traffic or that offer plenty of room for the officer to get out of the way. But sometimes you'll see our officers selecting another option. It's not because Davis County has suddenly become more dangerous for law enforcement, not at all. In fact, we continue to live in one of the safest communities in the country. We're doing it because traffic stops have always been dangerous. They will always be dangerous, and we believe that this approach is a better way of doing them. Also, we know we're not immune to changes in American society, and we cannot allow ourselves to become complacent. So if you get questions about what we're doing and how we're doing it, we wanted you to know why. Thank you very much for the opportunity to let me tell you about it. Okay, Thank you. thanks, Sheriff. Commissioners, any questions or comments? You know, just to tell we've welcomed these four new ones. I want you to go back and tell your staff they do an excellent job here in Davis County. We'd appreciate it. It's no, you do, and, and we appreciate that, Judge. Okay. We've got two of these officers that are working as we speak, so we're going to get them back out on the road. <laughs> All right. Thank you for having us. Thank you, guys. Thank be, you. be safe. Jenny, are you ready for the next one?
Item two, item two, consideration for approval, A minutes of the June 23rd, 2016 court meeting. Move to approve. Take it. I have a motion and second. Commissioners, you've had a copy of the minutes in your possession for some time. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> See all claims for all departments. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion and second. Again, Commissioner, you had a copy of all the bills due and payable by Davis County Fiscal Court in your possession for some time. Any questions of the Treasurer? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. D. Order of allowance to the Board of Assessment Appeals. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and second. Uh, Mr. Hendricks, can you explain to us what we're doing here? Yes, each year the, the according to Kentucky law, the, the, with the PVA when they look when uh, people want to appeal their property tax assessment, they come before a four or five panel board and the individuals that are listed on this claims were the individuals who served on that board. Uh, they are allowed to be paid at the rate of $100, which we will pay. We will then be reimbursed half of that back from the state. So I've looked at it. It is an order. Okay. Question or comment by the commission? Question or comment by the public? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. E. MOA with Toyotetsu Mid-America. Motion approved. Second. Okay. I have a motion and second. Commissioners, I have Madison Silbert from Economic Development Corporation with us out here. Madison, would you come forward and explain to us what this uh, memorandum of agreement does? Certainly, Judge. Thank you for, uh, for having me here and for having Greg Lane from Toyotetsu, who, uh, who is here and will be able to give a few comments um, here at the end of mine. Uh, several months ago, as a part of our existing industry uh, rounds that we make here in the community. We began speaking with uh, Mr. Lane about the potential for Toyotetsu expanding in Davis County and it was at that um, it was at that time that he made it very clear that if they were to do an expansion here it would be a significant one potentially up to possibly a hundred thousand square foot addition to their to their existing facility and could be as much as 20 million in fact the investment is going to be more like 21 almost 22 and they will be adding approximately 50 jobs to their already 492 folks who work in this county that, uh, that work for Toyotetsu right now. But he made it very clear that one of the big problems and one of the big hurdles that they have, and, and uh, Davis County Fiscal Court is one of the co-developers of the air park where they reside, that uh, they need for safety concerns a second entrance into that facility. And, and uh, at almost 15 years, being a, being a good citizen of Davis County, uh, they were curious if, as an incentive to that potential expansion, would it be possible for, uh, for us to approach uh, the Economic Development Fund Committee of Davis County Fiscal Court and ask them if they could assist in any way with that project that will be about $71,000 to implement. So uh, we, uh, we did just that, brought them to the ED committee and uh, requested $50,000 uh, out of that fund that the, uh, the commission has gracious, graciously created for another year uh, to provide an incentive for them in this growth. And uh, let me just say, I think as I always do when, when I'm here to talk about that fund, what a, just what a terrific tool it is. And, uh, and how this court, I think, has taken the long view and the wide view of economic development. That meaning, you know, this is, a, this is an organization that is not within the unincorporated limits of Davis County. Uh, this is truly a countywide fund that is used for, if you're a business in Davis County, then, uh, then we've listened to you, and, and uh, that, is, that is so appreciated. Um, but also just to have that tool, but there, because there are so many communities that do not have that extra little something, uh, but, but we have it, and it's because of, uh, because of the graciousness of this court to make it available, so thank you very much. Okay. Um, Available for any questions you have. Uh, any questions of Madison? You know, Madison, just to comment on what you said, I think you're exactly right. We do take that long view, whether it be within the corporate limits of the city or outside those corporate limits. We are fiscal court for the entire county, and uh, that's why we established that fund. And it pleases me that we're able to help existing businesses expand their operation. 
I think it strengthens the tie between the community and the existing business and keeps them within our community. So, commissioners, any yeah. questions? I will just make a small point that, you know, when we set this up, we had the desire that we would be helping local companies, right. the ones that were already here, our ones we're already friends with. So we're, we're really glad that that's what's happened. Judge, you, yes. I, I would note that the Economic Development Advisory Group did recommend that they we did, pass this. I gonna, yes, I was going to say they brought it to us without any any hesitation. So uh, with that, do you want to invite Mr. Lane up, uh, see if he has any comment? Absolutely, Greg. Uh, good evening, everyone. Just on behalf of Toya Tetsu Mid America, we'd like to thank you all for the consideration uh, that you're giving to this, uh, the, this MOA. Uh, one of the things, as Madison brought up, uh, the safety of our team members is the utmost important. Uh, and, and some of you all may not know what Toya Tetsu does or even that much about us, uh, but our tr our, uh, currently our team members share the same entrance as our, our trucks. And we right now receive about 110 tractor trailers per day. Uh, so that's a lot of traffic with uh, a lot of team members as well. Uh, so, and uh, with the expansion and everything else, uh, obviously that, that trucking is going to go up and increase. So uh, we want to try to eliminate that and, and eliminate any void of uh, potential injury to, to, you know, a trucking uh, company or to our team members. So uh, we, we appreciate your consideration and thank you very much. Well, this has to be a twofer then. It increases jobs and economic development as well as safety for the people that, that work in our community. So, again, thank you for being here. Commissioners, any question or comment? My only comment is thank you for uh, creating 50 jobs and maybe another consideration of continuing to increase that. We like that. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of the uh, memorandum of agreement signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madison. Thank you, Greg. F, allocate an additional $500,000 for road paving. Move to approve. Second. Commissioners, uh, back when we were doing the budget, I think you, um, I had proposed that perhaps we look at spending an additional $1 million total uh, on paving roads, asphalt is relatively cheap right now. Uh, we have some roads that I think every one of you came back and said, well, let's spend it if we can, if it needs to be spent, let's not just spend it to be spending money. I had the engineer uh, give us a list of roads that he would propose to do. I think my recommendation to you folks would be that we uh, go ahead and allocate an additional $500,000 now and then take another look sometimes around the end of the year to see how our revenues are coming in, see how our expenses are, and if we can uh, afford to put up the other 500000 that we do it. So, Mark, do you have that list with you, the list of roads? I do. Would you, uh, commissioners, have you, you've all seen the list. You, yes. Do you agree with that list? Yes. Why don't you just read so that the, the folks out here will, in the audience might know and those who are watching would know which roads were, additional roads we're talking about doing. Yes, sir. Uh, Public Works Department uh, is recommending uh, the following list. In the East District, we are recommending Short Station Road from Kentucky 144 to Jack Kenton Road for a length of 3.068 miles. Uh, also in the East District, we are recommending Indian Hill Road from St. Lawrence Road to Drury Road for a distance of 2.794 miles. That gives a total for the East District of 5.862 miles. For the Central District, we are recommending McFarland Road from US 431 to Browns Valley Red Hill Road for a distance of 1.882 miles. That's the total for the Central District. The West District, we are recommending Possum Trot Road from Jewel Road to Mulligan Road for a distance of 1.098 miles. And uh, finally, for the West District, Kurdsville Delaware Road from Smock Road to Boone Street for a distance of 2.992 miles. That gives a total distance for the West District of 4.090. That gives a total for uh, the additional $500,000 of 11.834 miles. 
Okay, right, right at 12 miles, and we said it's about $42,000 per mile, so that, that pans out too. Do you think that we will be able to uh, get these all done this year? I do not. Okay. This calendar year. This, this fiscal this, year, yes. This calendar year. No, yeah, it was a calendar year. <laughs> Uh, most of that paving is already set. Some of it might roll over into the next year. Typically, we can get about 80% done okay. uh, on our current past budget. So I would suspect just about all of this we can get done, but just not all. Okay. Commissioners, questions, comments, discussion? I have a question, Judge. <coughs> yes, sir. Mark, will our price be locked in that would cover that cost for the additional 500,000, even though we may not be able to resurface that am uh, large amount of roads. Do, or do you, is that gonna, I know the price of oil right now is starting to creep up a little bit, which affects asphalt. And uh, so what, do you get like a certain pricing for, for so much or what? No, it's an annual bid. Uh, okay. We open it up, uh, I believe January, it's one of the first bids that we opened up. So the current price that we have is for $65 a ton. That will hold true to the end of this calendar year. Uh, and then we'll open up next year's, which we'll, uh, we'll use that price for the remainder of what we don't get. Okay, done. thank you. And that again, Commissioner, would be why I'd want to look at it again yes, absolutely. Some, somewhere mm -hmm. then to see just exactly what's going. I think the projections are that it's going to hold fairly steady where it's at now. So yeah. anyway, any other question or comment? I'll just yes, comment sir. for the public that the, these roads we're talking about were probably would have been first on our list for next year. Right. So we're moving into the future a little bit. So it's sure if i may yes we have a standing list uh, i've got a list out to about a year or two right and uh, as the year goes on uh, the road foreman and uh, the road inspector will add roads as we travel them to that list these are just the next roads on that list so if, they if would have we, been the first one on next fiscal uh, if year. we do the this additional five hundred thousand plus another five hundred thousand we're going to end up doing about 45 miles in the fiscal year yes so uh, when we started looking at this list we had approximately 90 miles right. on our list right. so we will have cut that list in half which is i mean we're we're going to be in pretty good shape then and certainly what we're saying is that while asphalt is cheap let's let's buy the market right so if there are any question or comment by the public there being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. G, promote Mike Winchell from service technician to heavy equipment operator in the Department of Public Works, effective 7 11 16. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion. Second, uh, commissioners, I think this is a promotion from within. Uh, isn't that right, Mark? It's not an additional employee. Uh, we had somebody leave and moved them up. Right. That, that is correct. We had. Uh, uh, Jerry well, that's Helms. right. We took one of my one grounds of, department. Took one of my road department. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a hard worker. I'm glad you sent him. That's road surprised department. me. I got somebody to work that hard out of your department. Any other question or comment? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. H, second reading of 6, 2016, an ordinance of the Davis County Fiscal Court and the City of Owensboro amending the inter-county Owensboro-Davis County Code of Ethics. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion second. Claude, one more time, tell us why we're doing this. Um, mostly because the city has changed the name of some of their employees, and we're changing those who are covered employees under the Ethics Code. Uh, and it's a it's a joint ordinance a joint with ordinance. the city and the right, county. Correct. Right. And we're we're doing that. We've changed a couple, or they've changed a couple of definitions, right. and the designated employees. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else that we're doing. Okay. It's the same thing, um, other than naming those additional employees and uh, adding, I think, one elected official that was not named before the constable. Okay. Any question or comment? Question or comment by the public. There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Three, consideration for appointment. A, Daniel Castlin and Amber Borman as viewers to view the section of Ratcliffe Road petition to be discontinued. Move to approve. Second. 
I have a motion and second, commissioners. The um, as we heard in the in the uh, public hearing, we've had a petition to uh, discontinue or close or no longer have a claim on Radcliffe Road. Uh, that's in the central uh, district. I had uh, asked the uh, central district commissioner to give us a couple names, and he did. Uh, he is related to one, so I'm assuming you're going to recuse yourself I from will. from this vote. Uh, what they will do is, uh, engineer, tell us what they're going to do. Uh, I will take them uh, out to the site uh, to show them the uh, portion of Ratcliffe that uh, it will be discontinued or, or no claim to. Uh, they will make a, a report to fiscal court. Uh, stating if there are any negative effects to the current uh, transportation system. Okay. Uh, as soon as we make this appointment, any timetable as to when would it be ready by the next meeting or the first meeting in August maybe? Uh, I, I suspect I'll be able to uh, get them out there uh, hopefully within the next two weeks. Okay. Uh, so yes. Okay. Any question or comment? There being an all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and let it be shown that Commissioner Castlin recused himself. Item, Next item. Item four, consideration for discussion. A, other business to be brought before the Davis County Fiscal Court. We have none, do we? No, sir. Good. B, public comments. Okay, this is the time during our meeting in which we invite the public to come forward, identify themselves at the podium. You're welcome to discuss uh, or talk about anything other than what was on the agenda. No takers, Jenny. C, comments by Davis Fiscal Court. Uh, Commissioner Caslin. Pass. Commissioner Wathen. I just want to mention, uh, most people probably read it in the newspaper, but we uh, canceled the July 3rd fireworks at Panther Creek, and we have rescheduled that for Saturday, September the 3rd. So we're looking forward to that. And okay. uh, secondly, I just want to again thank Toyota Tetsu for having confidence in our community that they have. And thank you. Commissioner Coger. I just want to say I learned some history uh, today. Got invited to Jaeger's uh, Marina mm -hmm. uh, to see the first launching of myself of the sand barge and did not realize that they've been building barges since 1983. And usually for you know different barges, whether it's sand, rock, or et cetera, um, takes different time frames to build these and uh, they are actually they, they released one today they're going to release another tomorrow and it takes about six to eight weeks from start to finish so it's a uh, pretty exciting you know and hit the water and slide slide down the bank the, the water way up in the air so I think and, and Commissioner Castlin and I went out and watched one yeah if they waited another week or two and we can't get the storm to stop, they won't have to release them to slide down the bank. The <laughs> river will come up and get them. And, and, you know, and it's good that we're building those here because the two that's uh, being sold is to a company in Kansas. So that's, that's really good. Okay. And the guys, uh, all the workers got to come out and watch. And that's yeah. what really made it even more exciting. And Jim Yeager was there. And, and, and for all those guys to see the workmanship, what they've done, Fine. and entering it into the water and, and going on to its journey. It, it was really exciting, so okay. thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Wathen, while you were talking about fireworks, I asked the county attorney, you know, we've all had gotten emails and calls regarding fireworks over the 4th of July, July holiday uh, weekend. The city has an ordinance. What, what exactly, Claude, are people allowed to do and not allowed to do? Well, of course, again, that depends on where they live. Right. Within the city, the city right. has a, a, an ordinance that says you have to be at least 18. You can only shoot what are called consumer fireworks, and they must be more than 200 feet from the nearest residence or, or, or vehicle, even if it's an abandoned vehicle. Uh, the county does not have a specific ordinance. Uh, I've mentioned to others a uh, noise, uh, if, there's, uh, if they're throwing or shooting them towards persons or buildings and threaten those buildings, they could be charged, depending on the nature of it, either with uh, a threat themselves or wanting endangerment, uh, criminal mischief if something is burned. Um, so usually what we have done is send a deputy if that becomes necessary. 
um, to the person or to the area where it is and ask them to refrain if they are if they are shooting it towards a, uh, a building or an occupied residence. Okay. Um, otherwise, it's noise on the county, and then the city has a specific one. I think there was a, an article recently. There was, uh, the, about the it best I remember. had a couple of kids who were actually charged. And right. The best I remember, and commissioners, you may have got this from the 911, consolidated 911. I think on average, there were about 15 complaints. Uh, that were responded to in the city each day during that July 1st through July 5th time. I think there were maybe three on average, three complaints outside the corporate limits of the city. So I, I don't know what you do. I'm, I'm certainly not one that wants to pass an ordinance that would put a damper on folks celebrating. Uh, but you, you know, as I told one of the people that called me or emailed me, you can't legislate good neighbors or good manners. And or good it's, sense. Or good sense. Uh, well, that's a given, Claude. Uh, you, you know, you, you, just, you just hope that uh, people will use good sense in the use of fireworks. But anyway, uh, thank you for that update. Yes, sir. Mr. Brasher, while I've got you over there, why don't you give us an update on, on these storms? Where I think it was you that said that uh, when Richard Payne was the EMA director, we didn't have all these storms. Now that Andy Ball has become EMA director, it rains every other day. Did you say that? I believe I was in the room when it was said. Oh, okay. Just wondering. Tell us about all the rain and the storms that have come through here. We've got a lot. Uh, the last 30 days, uh, checking National Weather Service, the last 30 days we've received uh, 10 inches of rain. That's not including the one that we just got in the last three hours. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in three, uh, seven major rain events in the last 30 days. Last seven days, we've got uh, four inches, and that's in four events. Uh, so uh, uh, typically, from what I could find on National Weather Service, we get about three to four inches of rain in July. Right. We got that in the first week of July. Uh, it just got updated, and uh, that, that last storm, depending on wh where you're at in the county, we just got another half of an inch of rain. Uh, the problem that we're finding is it's not just Davis County, but uh, it's the other three counties that drain into Davis right. County are getting hit also, plus Green River uh, is now approaching flood stage in Calhoun, which we drain into. So uh, we're, we were in good shape before. Panther Creek was down. Uh, the Green River was down. Uh, we, we handled this last week of rain events pretty well uh, as far as the major creeks. Uh, we had some localized flooding uh, across the county, uh, but at this point we're saturated and all the ditches are full and the rivers are filling. I think uh, some areas of the county might have gotten a two inches in, in a storm, this, not this storm, but the one prior to it. In some areas of the county got as much as seven inches. Yeah. I mean, it really becomes localized and, and for the folks out there, I know how frustrated they get uh, with flooding, but the fact is that we are a flat county, ditches only hold so much, and there's not a lot that you can do. Uh, explain this to me. If I have a 50-year rain event today, what's the likelihood I would have one tomorrow? Is, is the chance diminished, increased? Uh, every day there's a chance. Every day there's a chance uh, for that same storm. Yep, it's just yep. a statistic, statistical analysis. Doesn't mean you only analysis. have one every 50 years. You could have 100 every 50 years. That, that's right. It, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, other than those, I really don't don't have any any other comments. I think I thank you for those updates. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I was going there anyway. You didn't want me to forget it. I have some uh, employee anniversaries. Robbie Hawker, our landfill manager, has been with us for 20 years. Uh, Gerald Jolly, a solid waste truck driver, has been with us for 15 years. Carl Wright, park maintenance supervisor, been with us 20 years. Brian Cecil, a, fire, a firefighter EMT, has been with us for 10 years. And David Smith, director of legislative services, has been here for five years. I want to say thanks to all those county employees for the uh, good and faithful service. If, what was that? Uh, yes, I thought you were gonna turn those <laughs> off before you made those comments. If there's no other business to be brought before Davis County Fiscal Court without exception, we're adjourned. <laughs>